Okay, let's go over some vocab. We use Trinket as our IDE. Uh, so an IDE, or an Integrated Development Environment, uh, allows you to develop, meaning you can stick code in here. Uh, it's a cool environment because it can uh, recognize uh, code for you, so it can show you errors, it can highlight uh, certain things to make it easier for you to read and work with. Um, if I'm starting to type in something, um, I can, uh, after a dot, it'll often come up with methods, so it'll give me suggestions. Um, it manages multiple files if I wanted it to do that. And the other cool part is that it interprets the code. Uh, you actually, if you can't just run Python code straight on a computer, if you haven't yet in installed an interpreter, so it can change that code into uh, action that the computer knows how to handle. Um, that uh, in this instance, uh, my operating system, um, OS X or Mac OS, it can interpret that, or Windows could could interpret what it is <coughs> that your Python code is trying to do to this computer. Um, anyway, so that's an IDE. Cool. A library. Um, this is a uh, something, for example, Turtle. It's an expansion pack. It's uh, a module in Python, it's called. There's a lot more to this, uh, but uh, there are often libraries built in to the language interpreter. So P Turtle comes with Python. When you have Python, you have Turtle. Other add-ons um, require installation. You can actually use tools called pip and other things that, uh, that are cool with Python that allow you to just add on new libraries as you need them. Pretty cool stuff. Next up is syntax. Syntax are just the rules. That, this is easy stuff. It's just um, you have to know um, that when you have a method header that it ends with a colon and then everything else is tabbed in to show that. Different languages have different rules of syntax. Uh, once you learn one language, it's easier to pull and uh, and learn another. Um, this is uh, once this is a very um, high level uh, language. It's it means that you can speak pretty literally. It looks like English. The closer that it gets to English, the sort of the higher level it is, um, and so you don't need to learn as much you know machine speak. Um, that's pretty much um, syntax. So. Uh, you would learn Ruby really well, uh, having studied Python, but learning uh, C or Java, it, there's a little bit more rule, there's some more rules that you'd have to learn. It's not too hard, the concepts are the same, there's just different stuff you need to specify. Okay, a uh, variable is a little space in memory. So, um, just to give you an example, uh, so we, uh, right now the this is a variable. Okay, this is this is a, a good example. This is what's called a local variable. Um, it does not exist um, outside. So this turtle is completely different than this turtle. It it, di it does not exist in the same place in memory. This will when uh, this draw star method runs, uh, it creates a turtle, and and then uh, tells it to do all of these things. And d now, I'm a little bit incorrect here. It doesn't actually create a turtle object. It, uh, like uh, what we've seen drawing around the screen, it creates a little spot in memory called turtle. It doesn't know really what that is, uh, what, what this uh, turtle is, if it's a real turtle that we use in Python, or if it's actually just an, a number. Uh, it doesn't know until we call the method. Uh, once we call the method, and I'm getting ahead of myself here, uh, here for example, I create a turtle, and now I call this uh, method, and I pass it the turtle that I just created. So this is a method call, and I'm sending the turtle over here. Now this variable that uh, is created, a copy of this turtle gets sent over here, and it executes it. Um, now, when I say a copy, that gets a little technical, but I will explain it uh, in a minute. But right now, I'm crossing this guy off. That's nice. Uh, so now, uh, these are types of um, yeah, the, these are types of uh, data types um, that we can create. So um, 
we have looked at objects, uh, so turtle is an object. But that's not the only thing I can stick into uh, a variable. So for example, I could create um, some variable, I don't know, you can call it anything, and I could stick a uh, blue in there. Uh, and if I call, if I make this right here, and then I could just replace this with some variable. And it knows what that would. It's just the same thing as blue. Um, just gets replaced. Um, so the this is a string. Um, this is an integer. And so if it had a, a dot, so if it had a decimal, then it would be uh, a float is what I want. Well, float or double. You know what? I don't know what Python uh, calls them. But uh, uh, an integer is different than a float or um, or a a double I I need to look that up meanwhile uh, all this is crossed off except for boolean boolean's a variable uh, but instead of putting a number or a bunch of words uh, in there it just stores a true or false um, which is really handy for like a toggle like an on off switch to have in your memory as you're running a program it's helpful to just to say you know um, is the game over yet uh, uh, keep it on no and then once I find a win, switch it over to yes, and then a bunch of other stuff happens. Um, so uh, that's handy, a, a Boolean, an on-off switch, basically. Um, okay, uh, methods and functions, cool. So right now, these are all functions. Uh, we call them functions in Python because they do not exist inside of a class. So I can turn them all, I can turn this guy into a method real quick. If I created a my own class, called super turtle and it it took all of the turtle uh, it, t it would take turtle sorry turtle uh, dot turtle so take the turtle dot turtle class and then we're going to add more stuff to it this is called inheritance this is a way advanced concept that I just snuck in there for you um, so now this function has turned into a method because it's now inside of a class um, on its own a, the function does the same thing largely as a method. Uh, you call it and it executes a bunch of act actions saved in this little call. Instead of having to repeat this code over and over, I stick it into some sort of action call or, or method. And then when I call uh, upon this action, I just tell it a few things. And those few things are called parameters. Okay, I'm move that here and I'm crossing it off because parameters are when you have a bunch of saved action commands, parameters are the extra information that it requires. Um, uh, classes are at the heart of programming. Classes are is the core of object oriented program. Um, so uh, turtle is a class. It's it this right here is actually a module. It's a library. Inside the module or library is the class with a capital T because we give classes capital T because we love them so much and that is a uh, turtle uh, turtle class so just like a boolean uh, some uh, string we can create our own types of objects and they'll have and we can define them what they can do here like uh, this here and we also uh, when we create it we also define what happens when we create it so a constructor so uh, right here, this it will uh, de describe what happens when a super turtle is born or is created, and so and so it, this init function will replace the turtle's built-in init function, um, which is not as cool as what we would do anyway. All right, so uh, this is. Uh, for a different class, but just to let you understand a little bit more, when I create a new object like a turtle, um, the name of that um, is, you know, player one in this case. Uh, I could, it, over here it's called T, that's the name of it. And actually, all that's inside, if I looked inside the RAM and, uh, you know, I hacked inside and I wanted to see what was being saved in that spot, what I would find is a a space in memory uh, I would travel over and it would show me um, a di it would reference a different space where there's a collection of interesting information saved about that so if I was creating a spaceship for instance 
and I had one pl player one spaceship and another uh, block was player two's uh, spaceship, each one would point to a copy of the spaceship. So instead of programming an entire new uh, code for a spaceship, I used I use it one time and make two copies of it. That's an instance, okay? That's an instance. Instantiation is creating that instance. That, that's uh, booting that up, you know? Uh, so your instantiation process, your constructor lasted nine months um, as a human. Uh, so a static is something that doesn't get instantiated. So it's a class that you call um, and you just use that class. So if I had made a spaceship class, I'd maybe I'd make a new spaceship called the Enterprise, and it would do a bunch of cool stuff. But if I made a class that was a calculator, I wouldn't need to make a new example of that calculator. I could just call calculator dot run this thing. I don't need to make examples of it. It's not going to be in my game as separate players. Um, so that's static. Okay, method call and method header. This is easy. Um, I'm just going to cross these off. Method call is when you activate one of these methods, uh, and so when you call it into action. So I can describe to you, when I tell you to clap, I want you to, to clap three times in a circular formation with your hands. Um, and so that's, that's uh, the method header would be the name of that and where I describe um, what's expected of that uh, series of commands. And the method call is when I tell you, okay, run that clap method. Um, so that's that's basically that. It, it, that's all the concept there. Instance variables are cooler. Um, oh, hold on. So this would uh, these are all instance variables. So they are we create them just as soon right under the class, and this is specifying. Okay, every turtle dancer in this instance, every turtle dancer will um, get. Uh, four turtles. So if I created another turtle dancer, and let's say this was a multiplayer game, and there were five people on there, then you would have 20 different turtles, because all five of them would have four uh, turtles each. Okay, uh, local variable, um, I already sort of talked about as well, and that's just uh, what happens um, when, right here, this X, this is created and it exists only inside this loop. So everything right under here uh, would be able to access anything inside uh, this. If you go in, if you do another tab in, this still uh, it still has access to the local variable. So anything tabbed in um, can see this. A global variable is something like this. It's outside of uh, the class, so it's not an instance variable. It's out here, so I could create uh, the turtle dancer class could describe something like that, assuming this is a special case because this is an example of that. Um, it, all right, that gets a little complicated. Uh, but if you're, if you're throwing out uh, variables up here, and I would do it this up at the top, uh, and so I, I could say like uh, global variable guy, I just make a stupid variable name. You shouldn't put technical descriptions like that in um, and I did a uh, stupid example, uh, this would be a string that would be largely considered a global variable. Uh, anything else can refer to that. Oh, snap, I have one minute left. Okay, so an if statement is the next thing, and if uh, this is called the condition. If this is true, if uh, command is equal to turtle power, if this is true, then run this stuff. Um, I could also instead of having like written stuff here I could call another method I could say like um, test this thing test this thing whatever and this would run and uh, it it would return a value if if it was true or not so it doesn't have to be just uh, uh, written commands like this you can also make a method call inside the conditional and that would return that value and here are your two loops while this is an infinite loop because true will always be equal to true, so this will just keep on looping. Uh, and this, so that's a while loop, um, and this is a for loop. It's a little more specific where you can say, okay, exactly four times, bang, bang, bang. Um, so there you go. Uh, and lastly, this is an array or a list. In Python, they're the same thing. I was going to explain, but I don't have any time. You list a bunch of things together. Now total list zero is the same thing as T1. The end.